I'm Dr. Angela McBurdy of drflute.com and today's flute tip is on five things that you do that can ruin your tone. Number one, too much pressure with your lip plate to your lip. So if I play, let me do that same passage. That was a, uh, uh, an excerpt from Marin Marais' Les, Les Folio d'Espagne. Okay, now if I push the flute into my lip a lot. If I'm pressing it in a lot, you can hear that difference. It's okay sounding, but it's ruining what I could have because pushing it in too much makes me cover too much of that hole. Now, could I compensate by rolling out? Let's see what happens. Roll out. Yeah, so it worked a little bit, but I lost a little bit of the focus I could have if I had the flute where I want it to be so that my air can split, be split by this strike edge right here. So if I roll it out, now my air is not being split in the same place. So that's a difference and that can really ruin your tone. If I put it on the way it should be, a really light pressure so that it just could be bounced on your lip like that, bounced. Someone could walk away, uh, walk behind me and with one finger just move it off my lip like that. It's that loose. Now I can concentrate on what's the angle to get a good tone. There we go with that first E. I'm going to angle it. And that certainly is a much more open sound. It has more clarity, it has more focus, and I feel like it's free. It's not this tight sound. Okay, number two, um, what you can do to ruin your tone. The second thing is have too much of a closed cavity. Everything is closed, okay? That means that inside your mouth, your lips, your teeth are too close together. And my, if I'm playing like that, Again, it's okay tone. Um, if you were thinking that that was your, you know, sixth, seventh grader, you'd say, wow, that's a fabulous tone, but it could be a whole lot better. So being that tight and that small is really ruining your potential. Now, if I want to open up here, I'm going to open up everything. And if uh, you were my student, I was working with you, I would do this one, like one step at a time. And right now I'm just saying all of it. I'm going to open my teeth. I'm going to open my lips. So there's much more space from, uh, in between my lips and, uh, I'm opening my throat up. All right. So it's all connected my throat, um, my lips, my teeth. I want all space. So from tight, to open. That's open, closed. It's a little bit buzzier. It's very small. I don't have any potential in that sound, but if I open, my tone just can blossom. I have room to grow. And even if you're not getting the most fabulous tone from, because you haven't gotten to that skill level, at least this is going to give you the potential to get that uh, level. Okay. Uh, let's go with another idea. One of those is that you are rolled in too much or uh, same idea, covering too much amateur hole. I was giving a Skype lesson today from a student and um, 
Skype lessons are great, especially in today's environment, or FaceTime, or Google, or Zoom, whatever it is you're doing your lessons on, if you're doing that. Um, but it is a little bit more difficult for me as a teacher to see how much are you covering here. It takes a little bit more creativity for me to, to see that. But we were I was able to uncover that, yes, yeah, she was covering too much of that embouchure hole. And when she learned to keep her chin up and keep this in a re, just a straight position, I don't always want to say rolled out because I don't want this to be out too far. So I'm careful to say roll it out. I'll just say move it out just a little bit. And then sometimes the answer is to move it up on your lip to get the tone that you're looking for. It all depends on the size of our lower lip here, where we want it. Uh, it's going to be different for everybody. But if I'm rolled in, or covered too much, It, number one, my intonation is going to be very, very off, okay? But also, the, the tone is it's covered. We're covering the embouchure hole right here. The airstream is not being cut at the precise place where it needs to be. And so your tone sounds like it's covered. Now let's put it in the right spot. Um, for my student, I said, I want to see, and I wanted her to look in the mirror. And she knew it was generally generally in the right spot if she could see just this edge in the mirror. And if I could see just this edge, not too much of that embouchure hole, but just the edge, then I knew we were in the ballpark of being in the right spot. I let my tone out. There's room for it to expand. All right, so those are three. Now our number four is you're not changing your embouchure for your octaves. So our embouchure is not set in stone. It can change and it needs to, absolutely needs to change depending on the octave you're in. When I'm in the low octave, I'm going to use this embouchure. When I'm in the higher octaves, I'm going to use this embouchure. My embouchure needs to be flexible. It needs to move. So in this instance, the fir very first two notes are an octave jump from a middle E to a low E. <laughs> And if you can see, my jaw changes. So the first E, it's I'm blowing the air out and I'm saying, where is that best sound for this uh, Baroque piece? And I got a little bit that caught in between sounds because I'm fluctuating, seeing where should I play that E. Now, I liked that spot. Now I'm going to aim for the low. Where is that good? Right there. And I don't know if you can see, but my jaw is changing because I'm changing the direction of that air. I'm moving the airstream down. So from here, Now that's an A, that's in your middle register A, and now I've got to go down to my low D. So my jaw is way down, my upper lip comes over the bottom, I'm blowing the airstream down. And I need to be able to do this in quick succession, so let me show you. So 
So my jaw is always in a state of flux. It's moving so that I can get that low register. I remember in high school and even in those early years of college where I would play a piece and I thought halfway through that piece in, that I was performing, my low register was gone. I got nothing but, you know, puffs of air sometimes. It's just, I, at least that's the way I felt. I'm sure something came out, but it wasn't great. And it wasn't until I really did this embouchure exploration and really learned how my embouchure could be flexible that I realized, oh, it's because I was staying up here with my embouchure, keeping a middle register embouchure when I needed to change to a low register. So work on that. Make your embouchure be flexible. Use some flexibility exercises and learn to adjust. All right, number five. We could probably come up with 10 things that ruin your tone, but today we're just concentrating on five. And so the fifth is that you are blowing too much air. I can't tell you how many people I have that that is the answer that, you know, one of their biggest problems with tone is they are blow too much air. Um, it's almost always the case when I get some big, um, large size, young man or, you know, a gentleman. And, um, they have so much air capacity, uh, they haven't learned how to hold that air in. And so it just comes tumbling out. I remember teaching a tuba player how to play the flute. Man, dizziness was the problem. Um, and because he thought, you know, I play tuba, I've got lots of air. I know how to do it, but it's this control of your air that gives you a good tone. Now, all of us have this problem. It doesn't have to be big guys. Um, when, until you learn how to, to hold your air in and you do it by support, support is the answer. And the word I like to use instead of support is air pressure. Air pressure is the key to holding the air in and not letting it come out. So I'm going to play that same passage and I'm going to blow a little bit too much air. I'm not going to control it. Okay. It's hard for me, hard to do that. I feel like I'm totally out of control and then I play the wrong notes, but I'm not using support. I'm not holding that air in. Now, if I take my air, I take a breath and I tighten my muscles and now I'm in total control with how much air comes out. Then I have a focused airstream. My tone is coming out beautifully. It's the tone I'm looking for for this type of piece. And uh, I'm going to be able to now have a lot more air to make it through a passage as well. So if you're running out of air soon and you can't hold your air or hold uh, your tone through a, an entire slurred passage or something, it's probably because you're blowing too hard. Learn how to take that breath and hold that air in. <laughs> Tighten up those muscles and keep the air locked inside so that you control the, the um, pace at which that air comes out of your armature hole. All right, those are just five reasons that ruin your tone. And you can fix them all, and you can fix them all today. Those are not long, hard things that take a long period of time and that you have to have a teacher help you over weeks and weeks. If you feel like all five of those are a problem for you, take one, go for a week where you're just working on, oh, but maybe the, the pressure on your lip. And then the second one is see if you can open up. And then the third, see if you can just do one for each week. And then you'll see that you can get control over your tone and start having just a fabulous sound. So enjoy working on your tone, fix those five problem areas, and you'll get a great tone. That's today's flute tip. If you like today's flute tip, press the like button, subscribe, comment below, and share with your friends.